Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for October 12th, 2020. I'm teaching a series entitled Greater is Coming. I want you to know that greater is coming for you. I want you to know that God made plans for you from the foundations of the world. According to Jeremiah 29 11, these are good plans. Plans to prosper you, plans to bless you, plans to give you a future and a hope. So as you walk with God and as the Holy Spirit begins to reveal things to you, that were prepared for you, but concealed from you, and you receive those things, and you believe those things, and you make course corrections to align yourself with your divine purpose, you will become the man, the woman that God calls you to be, and greater is coming for you. So this is part 44 of the series. The title of today's message is, Be Gracious to Your Enemies. How do you deal with enemies? Look, look, uh, you know, like the young folk would say it today, Haters going to hate, right? I mean, there's going to be, if you are going to be a person of influence, if you are going to maximize the purpose and the potential that God placed inside of you from the foundations of the world, there will be some people who don't like it and who don't like you because the attack is against your purpose. The greater the assignment, the greater the attack. And at the end of the day, haters going to hate, but you don't focus on them. You pray for them. You just focus on your purpose. You know that they can't really destroy you. Their poison cannot derail you from your purpose. So at the end of the day, you pray for them, you intercede, and you keep going. But today we're going to learn that we could actually be gracious to our enemies. So let's deal with it. All right. So we've been studying the life of David. And uh, as we study the life of faith, or if you've been listening to, to me for a while, then there's some recurring themes. Let me just uh, address some of the themes or principles that, that I share over and over again. Uh, and I have a lot of them, but these are just a few this morning that are, that are germane to the, the message for, for today. So here's, here's one. God is better to you than you are to him. God is better to us than we could ever be to him. If God only gave us what we deserve, we would all be men and women most miserable. Here's another one. God blesses us because he loves us. Not because we're good, but because God is good. God wants to bless you. You know why? Because God wants to bless you. Not because you're good, because he's good. You need to get over it. Here's another one. As recipients of God's grace, our Heavenly Father expects us to be extenders of God's grace. So just like the grace of God has come to you, the Father expects for the grace of God to flow through you. So as a recipient of God's grace, you should be an extender of grace. And that's what I'm talking about today, being gracious toward, towards our enemies. Here's another one. Forgiven people forgive people. You have been forgiven by God. And since you have received forgiveness, you should be an offer of forgiveness as well. Since God forgave you, you should be more inclined to forgive others. And the last one I'll cover for today as we get into the message is the only way that you will become the, the man or the woman that God called you to be from the foundations of the world is to embrace the love of God, you know, open up your heart to God's love, yield to God's grace, and patiently endure for the long haul. That's what I've been teaching on in this series. It's about faith and patience. Endure for the long haul with the love of God and the grace of God. You can do it. You got it? All right. I laid the foundation there because I'm going over into 1 Samuel chapter 24. And in this chapter, something happened, and I, I'll deal with it today. I'll deal with it tomorrow, that I, I just wanted to share those points up front. So in this chapter, here we go. David exemplified a lot of what I just said. As Saul returned from fighting, fighting the Philistines, remember that Saul was almost there. He almost had David. David was locked up in a corner. And then right then, God made a way of escape. Someone came and said, King, Mr. King, you got to hurry up and get back because the Philistines are attacking the Israelites. And he looked at Saul from across the, the mountaintop. He was like, mm, and he took off and he had to go fight the Philistines. So he fought the Philistines. And when he was done fighting the Philistines, the Bible says that David had gone into the wilderness of Engedi. And so David is out there in the wilderness and Saul is so pissed at David that after they fought the Philistines, he takes 3,000 men, 3,000 men, 3,000 elite troops, the Bible says. So think of it in today's terms, for those of you that are familiar with the military, with the U.S. Army, that's like a brigade combat team. So he took, you know, first of the 82nd, he took a brigade combat team, elite troops, 
and he's searching for David now. And David, the Bible says that, is in an area, he's hiding in an area known as the rocks of the wild goats. So you just picture that. There's an area called the rocks of the wild goats, and that's where he's hanging out. And so this is a mountainous area. There's some caves there, and Saul is there with his brigade combat team and searching for David. And so Saul arrives in the area, and he's looking, and the Bible says that he got to this place where the road passes some sheepfolds, and Saul was like, man, hey, I got to go use the bathroom. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, Saul was a king, but he was still human. So he was like, hey, guys, hold on for a minute. He gets off his horse. He was like, I got to use the bathroom. And so he goes into this cave. To relieve himself. And so when he gets in there, now I love, I mean, the Bible is so good. These stories are amazing. He gets in there and he's using the bathroom, right? He's doing this thing. I mean, like at, at the end of the day, we all, we all got to do it. And so he's doing this thing. He walked into the cave where nobody guards, nobody. Why? Because he got to use the bathroom. He, you know, so he went by himself. So he's in the cave all by himself. And while he's there doing his thing, <laughs> David and his men were hiding in that same cave. So David's men saw Saul walking in by himself, no swords, no nothing, no guards. And David's men was like, oh my God, David, today the Lord is telling you, I will certainly put your enemy into your power. Do with him as you wish. This was David's opportunity. Saul was completely vulnerable, if you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying? So while he's doing his thing, I mean, he's completely vulnerable in that moment. And so David creeps up behind him. While Saul was still relieving himself, and David took a knife and cut a piece of Saul's robe off, and then that's it. He didn't do anything else. As soon as he did it, actually, this is what the Bible says. David was such an honorable man that the Bible says that his conscience got a hold of him, and David thought to himself, the Lord knows that I shouldn't even done, have done this to, to my Lord, the king. Watch this. This man is trying to kill you. And he's still honoring him. He's still respecting him. He says, this man is my Lord, the king. I should not have done this. The Lord forbid that I should go and attack this man. This is the Lord's anointed. The Lord chose him and I'm not going to do it. And he walked away. He walked away. David restrained himself. And then the, the men were like, well, let me do it. And he was like, no, I'm not going to let you kill him either. So David restrained himself and did not kill the king. And he did not allow his men to kill the king either. Now, what happened next is cool, and I'm going to deal with it tomorrow, but let me just stop here for today. So what does this mean to you today? You're like, Rick, this is a good story. I like a good story, but it's a Monday morning, and I have a very busy calendar. I got you. So do I. So, so I have three things to share with you on this morning. Three things. As I release this, this is I want you to open up your heart to receive. Three things. Number one, here we go. You ready? The fear of the Lord. Look at me. The fear of the Lord restrains you even when others don't have restraint. So it doesn't matter what they're doing. It doesn't matter how they're treating you. The Holy Ghost will restrain you even when they are operating without constraint. Although David was unrestrained in his fury towards David, David restrained himself towards Saul. David was laser focused on becoming the man that he was called to be. He was focused on his purpose and his dedication to God kept him from killing Saul when he had the chance. Now, Solomon said in Proverbs 29 and 18, where there is no prophetic vision, people cast off restraint, but blessed is he who keeps the law, right? Where there's no, the King James says, where there's no vision, the people perish. That's not really a good translation. Another translation says, where there's no revelation, no vision, no, pro no prophetic revelation, people cast off restraint, right? People cast off restraint. People with no vision, they are unrestrained because they don't know where they're going. But people who have a prophetic vision from God, people who know where they are going, these are not people who are free to do whatever they want. No, they are laser focused on becoming the man, the woman that God called them to be. So the vision that God puts in your heart, what happens is it restrains you. Vision keeps you focused. Vision keeps you from doing things that are outside of the will of God. This is how David lived. Now, people with no vision right? People with no vision, they are unrestrained. They will do whatever. They, they, they're going this way today, that way tomorrow, and it seems like they're going crazy. And this is a good example because David was restrained. He had vision. Saul was unrestrained. He did not have vision. See, when you know who you are, that's your divine identity. And you know what God birthed you to do, which is your purpose. And you know where you're going, which is your vision. It's much easier to live as Jesus is in this world. Let me say that again. I need to repeat that. Look at me. When you know who you are, meaning that's your identity. I know who I am, right? You know what God birthed you to do. That's your purpose. I know what my purpose is on this planet. I'm not a mistake. 
and you know where you're going, which is vision. God has given me divine vision. Now, it's much easier for me in that state to live like Jesus is in this world, to emulate God on this planet. David could have killed Saul in that cave. He could have done it. Saul was completely vulnerable, but David's identity and his purpose and his vision kept him from doing it. Divine restraint is part of godly character. If you walk with God long enough, you study the word long enough, you listen to the Holy Spirit long enough, you will develop godly character. And part of that is divine restraint. There's some things that you're just not going to do. Even when people are nasty towards you, even when people are mean towards you, you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit and your divine character, it will restrain you. It, it will. Re this is what you need to operate in faith and patience. Godly character will restrain you from getting others back. I'm telling you. You got it? All right. Number two, honorable people do honorable things. Now, while you're waiting on God to do what he said, are you waiting on God? I know you're waiting on God. That's why you're watching this series. It's about faith and patience. I'm waiting on God for certain things. You're waiting on God for certain things. You're believing God. I'm believing God. So while you're waiting on God to do what he said, one of the most important things that you can do is be a man or woman of honor. Say honor. You got to be a man or woman of honor. The whole kingdom of God functions on a culture of honor. So while Saul, King Saul, was dishonorable towards David, David was still honorable towards Saul. He wouldn't do it. He was like, no, I'm still going to see him as my king. I'm, gonna, I'm still going to respect this man. So what is honor? Honor means that you respect the human in the loop without tripping over or getting caught up in their faults and their flaws and their failures. Let me say that again. Honor means that you respect the person without tripping over their mistakes or their faults or their flaws or their failures. You respect the person anyway. And this is exactly what David did. David was honoring Saul, even though Saul was dishonorable at this point. David looked past Saul's faults and his flaws and his failures, and he honored him anyway. Now, I'm not going to say that this is an easy thing to do, but if you, your dedication to God should be so strong that you will honor people regardless of how they treat you. And if you do that, you will become a candidate for God's best. Let me say it another way. You should refuse to ever drop down to someone's level when they're being dishonorable towards you. Just because somebody is nasty towards you doesn't, and this is who you are and this is who they are, you should not, just because they're being nasty towards you doesn't mean that you should drop down to their level. Being a man or woman of honor means that I'm still going to honor them even though they're not honoring me. Even though they don't even deserve honor, I'm still going to be a person of honor. That's how we're supposed to live. Although David's actions did display honor towards the king, let me just make this final point around this. David had a chance to kill Saul. And yes, although he did honor Saul, really what he was doing was honoring God. He had more honor for God than he did respect for Saul, and his honor for God kept him or restrained him from doing anything to Saul. See, when you love God and you really love God, like with all your heart, all your might, all your soul, all your strength, then you will honor people even when they're being nasty towards you because you're not doing it for them. You're doing it for God. See, and if you can maintain a position of honor, it's about you and your relationship with God, not what they do. And if you can maintain a position of honor between you and God, listen, it's only a matter of time before you see what God said, before you see the manifestation of the promise. You got it? All right, number three, and finally, I only have three points for you this morning. Last point as I close. Divine patience. Uh, I'm sorry, divine purpose. You want to you maximize the purpose that God gave you. Divine purpose requires supernatural patience. Now, while David was waiting on the manifestation of God's promises, he waited actually 20 years. This is supernatural patience. So let me just talk about patience once again, because this series is about faith and patience. If you believe that you know what God has destined you to do, let's say that you believe that you know that. Okay, I have an idea, Rick, of what God has called me to do. That doesn't mean you know how he's going to do it, right? Oh, but let's say you say, okay, no, no, no. God has given me a, an idea of how. So now you kind of know what you think and you kind of know how you think, but that doesn't mean you're going to know when. <laughs> so maybe you know what, maybe you know how, but you don't know when unless God tells you when. So, so you have to wait on God's timing. A lot of things have to line up. Like, you know, there are many factors here. A lot of things had to line up before David could become the king. A lot of things had to line up before Joseph could, could, could realize the dream that God put in his heart. There's a lot of things that have to line up. And you don't know all the things that God is working behind the scenes. And so at the end of the day, if you do the, the right thing, but you do it at the wrong time, it becomes the wrong thing. And so let me say it another way. The right thing or, or the right end, if you pursue it the wrong way, is going to produce the wrong end. 
So you have to wait on God's timing. David could have killed Saul in that cave, but if he did, he would be pursuing the right thing the wrong way. And it actually could have derailed him from his destiny. Like, we don't know. I just, when I thought about this, when I got to this point, I thought about Moses. Deep down in his heart, Moses, he was dressed like an Egyptian. He was walking like an Egyptian, right? I mean, he was, he was trained by the Egyptians, but deep down in his heart, he knew that he was called to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. And, and so, so he had this mm, down in his heart. But see, this is why you can't pursue the right thing the wrong way. Moses did the right, he wanted to do the right thing, but he did it the wrong way. He got out ahead of God, he killed somebody, he did it with his own hands, he was trying to make something happen, and because he was trying to make something happen, he got exiled, and he had to spend 40 years in the wilderness. Now, we don't know. If David had killed Saul in that cave, maybe it would have derailed him from his destiny. Maybe the story of David would be completely different, but David was like, no, I'm not going to get out ahead of God. I'm not trying to make this happen. I'm not going to try to fabricate God's purpose. At the end of the day, if God wants me to be the king, he has to make me the king, and I'm not going to kill this man. I'm not going to do this on my own terms. At the end of the day, you have to wait on God and not try to make something happen and not trying to make something good happen in a bad way. You got to wait on God's timing and become a person of honor and, and have supernatural patience. God cannot allow you. Listen, remember, God is not punishing you. He's processing you. And God cannot allow you to bypass the process because prepared blessings come to prepared people. And so as a born again believer, you got to be prepared for your assignment. God gave you a purpose, but he's preparing you for your purpose. God called you from the foundations of the world and everything you need is already stored up, but now he's preparing you for what he prepared for you. And you got to go through the process. Let me give you a word of encouragement as I close. The same grace that's on you to walk in that level of success when that time comes, that grace is on you now to wait. The, the same grace that's on you to walk in that divine success when, that, when the timing is right, that same grace is on you now while you're waiting on God to open doors for you that no man can close and close doors for you that no man can open. And when the time is right and the doors swing open, you will have the grace to walk through it because at that point you will be developed, you will be prepared, you will have godly character, and you'll be able to carry the weight of the anointing associated with your assignment. Say amen to that. Greater is coming for you. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to repeat after me. Say this. Say, Father, you alone are Lord. You alone are God. You alone are my king. And I worship you. Now, since you're my Lord, I submit to your plans and purposes. Not just for me, but for everyone I come in contact with. This means that I honor what you want to do in my life. And I also honor what you want to do in their lives. So I will submit to you in all ways. And I refuse to get in the way of what you're doing in someone else. I know you will see to it that we all reap a harvest on every seed sown. Therefore, Father, I don't have to seek revenge on anyone. When people come up against me sowing bad seed, I know two things. First, their attacks will fail because you have a hedge of protection around about me. Second, they're going to receive a bad harvest on bad seed. So I don't have to go after them. I release them into your hands. I wait patiently for doors to open that no man can close and for doors to close that no man can open. And as they do, I experience your best by your grace. Greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. So please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org, sign up, put in your email address, get the, and you're going to get all my notes every day in your email inbox for free. Listen, go into this day knowing that you can be gracious to your enemies. They can't hurt you anyway. So just pray for them. You just focus on being you. Focus on being a man or woman of honor, and you will experience God's best. If this message has been a blessing to you, leave me some comments uh, in the chat. I read all the comments. Uh, and then please share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. I love you. God loves you more. Be gracious to your enemies. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you.